Hey friends, welcome to another episode of the Dable Podcast where we dive into what is going on in modern dating mm -hmm. and what are the things that we can change to make our experiences better. And one of those that we're diving into today is all about microwave relationships. And guess what? We made up that term, so we get credit, okay? I was going to say, UA got really excited when she, this was your brain, Chad. I will give you credit. You texted me and you're like, I have the best name for today's episode. It's better than turbo relationships because turbo <laughs> relationships could just mean a hookup, it could be something very casual. A microwave relationship means that there is a result. You're looking for something there. So it's meaningful. It's just that it's a more, uh, it's a quicker way to get through a, a relationship. And many of us have had multiple microwave relationships. So we'll go into the whole definition in the episode, but how I just, I think of it just in short is it's like a micro relationship. Probably lasts between one and three months. I think the big difference between a turbo relationship is that you go through all the stages of a real relationship within that time period. So you're like meeting the friends and moving in together and all these crazy stuff that usually takes six months plus to start to develop, where I feel like the microwave relationship is usually it starts off pretty fast, hence the, you know, putting it in the microwave, we're going to zap that relationship. And it seems to peter out pretty quickly within the one to three month. You usually go into these relationships being like, oh my God, I met someone. This is going to be it. I think I found my person. And then it starts to peter. And it's really hard to come back from these. Like I know I've had a lot of these and I think they're beneficial. Like when I first started being, I remember like when I first joined Match, this was years ago, right? I feel like I didn't have much real relationship experience at that point. Like I had a few like, you know, college relationships and stuff, but less adult relationship where you were going on more actual formalized dates and all of that. And I definitely had a few of these like mini relationships in that period. And while of course you want them to result in more, I think there's still practice. There's still relational experience that is beneficial. And, you know, hopefully when you actually have something that's the real deal, you can look back on them and see that they were almost training wheels. Another way to kind of think about this is even when you're in a long-term relationship, you're going through stages of many relationships with your partner too. Things mm -hmm. change, you evolve. So we don't want to minimize microwave relationships because they are the real deal. It's just that there are shorter periods of time. And you could have that with, with multiple people throughout your lifetime. So I'm going to relate this to <laughs> that movie marry me because I texted you Julie about this I was like I, I can't believe I'm confessing to this but I did watch marry me with JLo okay oh right I was like did with, you text me this I think I maybe just yes. chose to ignore that text. yes <laughs> with my parents because I I'm missing a good rom-com and I love <laughs> JLo and she looks ridiculous for whatever 50 some years old that she is the, the movie is whatever. I think it got like 30% on Rotten Tomatoes or something. So it's not going to win any Oscars this year? I really hope that one day in our <laughs> lifetime, J-Lo will be up for an Oscar and it will be for a rom-com, okay? But she has made her entire career out of pop culture, shiny, I don't know, shiny movies, shiny TV shows. She's very good at that. But the... What I really liked about this movie was she basically, you know, like she plays this pop star in the movie. She pay, she plays herself. OK. And she's about to marry this other pop star who ends oh up cheating on her. But they were about to get married on live TV. OK. This is oh the premise is ridiculous. So this is her th the fourth marriage would be her fourth marriage. And then when she finds out that her the man cheated on her, she's on live television and she points to a random guy in the audience and is like, you, I'm going to marry you and ends up being Owen Wilson. OK, so this is this is ridiculous. I know I, we don't need to go any farther into the depth of this movie. But what I like about it is someone asked her why you're getting married for the fourth time. Like, why are you doing this again? Why do you mm -hmm. do you still believe in love? And she she basically says, 
everything will lead me to love. And these are Mm. all just stages of love. Mm -hmm. And she has this great song in the movie called Every Heartbreak Was a Yellow Brick Road. Mm. And the lyrics, Julie, I, I was like, this is really profound. So the lyrics are, and every heartbreak was a yellow brick road pointing me straight, just taking me home. I was never lost. I was just passing through. I was on my way to you. That is profound. And I think that's why microwave relationships can be good. I mean, clearly the Mm -hmm. heartbreak in Fallout is not always the best when you're in it. But I think if you didn't have much dating experience, for instance, and then you launch into something, gosh, I'm going to say that again, because that is kind of a scenario. I think they're good. um, You know, I think they couldn't be good stepping stones. They're like giving you a taste of a relationship and then it gets you ready for something a bit more serious. Yeah. And I think it's really great to think about it this way. Don't think about it's like time wasted or I met the wrong person at the wrong time. It's not about that. Every relationship you get into is the right person at the right time. Mm -hmm. Think about it that way. You know what's fascinating that just made me think about this was I feel like rom-coms set us up for microwave relationships because... Mm. The whole thing is about, you know, the spark, this intense feeling of chemistry. And we go into this on the episode, and we know we've talked to Logan Yuri uh, from Hinge about how she really hates the spark, the passion, yeah. hates the spark. And I think a lot of us are looking for a certain feeling. And oftentimes, this feeling that is on rom-coms of, you know, I meet this person, and there's some obstacle I need to get over, but I'm wild about this person and then once they finally get together it cuts to the credits i feel like if this was to actually play out in real life it'd probably be a microwave relationship it would probably last (laughs) two months if even and then it would just fizzle out which is i know i don't know these hot and heavy i'm always skeptical when they go so fast at the beginning i feel like i've seen it happen way too often I do think rom-coms are evolving. They're getting a little bit smarter and more relevant with the times. So in this movie, as cheesy as it was, at one point, there was a very powerful moment in there where a reporter asks her, "Why, why did you choose him? And she's like, you know what? For so long, women have been on men's timelines. We're Mm -hmm. waiting for them. We're waiting for them to propose or waiting for them to ask me out. I'm, I'm taking that back. I'm... I want to be empowered to to pick the guy and mm-hmm. keep my name and have him earn his keep. And I was like, yes. Yes, yes exactly. I think, too, it's La La Land, that movie. Mm-hmm. I don't know if we describe that as a rom-com. I feel like it's more of a drama, but it's on the edge of kind both. Kind of, yeah. It's mm-hmm. on the edge of both. I loved that movie. And the reason why is the ending of it. It basically was like the life they could have had together and how that wasn't what ended up happening because that wasn't reality. The reality Mm -hmm. was that he was married to his job, which is, you know, flashback to last week's episode for anyone that missed it. But it's the reality that, you know, even if you have the perfect seemingly love story, like life is like love isn't an Instagram story. Like it can't just play out 100 percent. Like, there's more to it that needs to go into it. And it's always, fa- like, I feel like rom-coms never, they usually end with the person, the people getting together. They don't usually end with that, even, like, life can't be compatible always. And I think that's what people wanted for so long. They want to hear the happy ending and just have it roll mm-hmm. into the credits. But then, remember that movie, what was it, Marriage Marriage Story? No. Marriage. Oh yeah, you the know one. What I'm talking about? Yeah, the one with um the guy from Girls, and oh right Adam was something. I forgot. Adam Driver. Adam yes. Driver. Yes, and yes. was it Scarlett Johansson in there? I can't remember. Oh my god, I'm gonna look this up. You keep talking. I'm gonna look this up. But what was it? It was like marriage. Um... It was depressing. Like yes. this is the one that they you know they just could not keep their marriage alive. Yes, uh, depressing movies about marriage. Let me see. There was there's been a few. <laughs> <laughs> what happens when you google depressing marriage weddings around depressing movies around weddings what comes so up so <laughs> many and i know someone's like 
listening to this right now. Oh, it's called Marriage Story. Yeah. Adam Driver, Scarlett Johansson, Laura Dern. Okay. Yes. You're right. Yes. And it. I think that movie, why people felt like it was so uh, groundbreaking was because it showed the ugly side of relationships. And it wasn't about just getting together, but kind of no. like the reality of what happens. So did you like that movie? I think it gave me too much anxiety. <laughs> so, okay. So that's what I was going to say. I feel like from a critic perspective, it was groundbreaking yeah. for what you just said. I think it was too real for a movie because yeah. I feel like I came out of it and I felt like there was a lot of times that I'm like, oh my God, this is just depressing. And it's the reality sometimes, but sometimes you do need an escape from the movie. Sometimes you need a little J-Lo getting married for yes. the fourth time. You know, like there needs to be a little escapism. Yes. Like if when, you, when it mirrors too much of reality, <laughs> You kind of are like, why am I even watching this? Because I'm just living right. this. <laughs> right. I, I feel like La La Land had a good balance because they gave you the romance at the beginning. Mm. And then they also showed how it was falling apart. And then at the end, they were both do like they both got what they wanted. He was successful in his career. She had yeah. met a more stable partner. And you were like, you were kind of bummed they didn't end up together. But you were also kind of happy that they live this life. And I think there was even a moment of like her in the audience, like locking eyes with him, which like ended the flashback mm. series. So I don't know. I, I like the realism component, but I think that it could get on the verge of too real too. Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember that movie Closer with Julia Roberts, Jude Law, Natalie Portman, Clive Owen? It was basically about these couples that were like cheating on each other oh, and yes. like, hated each yes. other. Yes. Yeah. I think this this was in 2004 and I think that movie was too ahead of its time because people yeah. were like, this is too much, too real. But then Marriage Story came in, you know, recently. And I think, I think like people want to, this is, I know this is going to sound really crazy, but why we don't have robots that look like humans is because they actually made they had this study where they asked people would you want a robot to look like a human and people said no i don't want i don't want something that's supposed to be fantasy to look too much like reality and i think movies Mm. really show that too it's like people don't want it to be that real no but yeah, it does get real after you end a microwave relationship. I think I'm glad that we went into this with Amir, who's our guest today. And, you know, we talked about this in the dating trauma episode, one of our most popular episodes mm-hmm. with Janice a few seasons back. And these types of relationships are really brushed under the rug. They're almost seen as insignificant a lot of times because your friends and family would be like, well, you guys weren't in a real relationship. Maybe you never defined the relationship. Maybe you didn't even have sex. Like there's so many like Mm. you didn't do this. So it's not real. But it totally undermines the feelings of what happens when you you almost get your hopes up that you've met someone amazing and that this life will begin. The credits will roll and it will continue. And then it just stops. Yeah. And unfortunately, I hate that we minimize it, but the fortunate thing is whenever I've been in these microwave relationships, my takeaway is, wow, I can feel that way about someone. Yes. I have yes. the capacity to have yes. these feelings for someone. That's amazing because I can have that again with someone else. And I think we like as long as you can learn from it and it doesn't keep happening over and over again. And I know for me, I remember this was actually at our event like that we did a long, long time ago. We did in this person? event in person so long ago in a past life. <laughs> and I had this microwave relationship, I would call. It was probably like a month or so, but I really thought like this was someone I was going to date. And he ended up ghosting me, which is how a lot of microwave relationships end. Sometimes, you know, there'll be there'll be some closure that the person says they're just done. But a lot mm-hmm. of times it will be also a ghost. And... I remember being really upset about this, but when we actually had our event, he was there randomly Mm -hmm. and I didn't even remember his name. So I feel like it put in perspective for me, it put in perspective that in the grand scheme of things, what can feel like the end of the world in the moment 
really ends up not being, especially mm-hmm. when you meet someone that's a reciprocal, real deep relationship that extends beyond the microwave. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the did you ever figure cooker. out his name? No, I still don't know his name. <laughs> But yeah, that's that's the point of it, right? Is like I think we always could put in perspective. Okay, in five years, when I've met my person, will I even remember this person? You know, I just I just really hope for us to get an email one of these days, <laughs> and the subject line is like it's Tim. <laughs> that would be amazing. That's it. That would be amazing. If you uh, remember your name i remember like where he worked what he looks like i have no idea what his name is no idea no i used to keep a notebook of all the people that i either had something with or had a crush on i used to keep a notebook of names because yeah. i didn't want to forget people's names but then yeah i agree then it's like <laughs> at some but point you're like i don't anytime I, don't I talk about significant relationships i've had these people don't even come up like in the no, moment I felt no. like they were so important and they never come up I feel like I've had probably like 10 microwave relationships over the last mm-hmm. 10 years but I don't even quantify them as relationship history anymore mm-hmm. yep yeah which is the hope hopefully if you're in this pattern of feeling like you only have microwave relationships one day someone will show you that all these people were insignificant Okay, announcements this week. We'll say, share this with a friend. We haven't said that in a bit, but I feel like we've all been in microwave relationships, whether it's to help someone out in their current state or maybe to help them see how far they've come. I think, you know, even Mm -hmm. if you are in a serious relationship now or you've been able to like get out of this pattern, this can be a good reminder of the progress you've made. Sometimes it's hard to see the progress we're making, especially if we're not at our end goal, but progress is always happening. So share this with a friend, give us a rating and review on Apple Podcasts, five stars, please. It really does help (laughs) us. So thank you, thank you, thank you in advance. 